can you bring those same resources to our communities so our kids can make it? Poverty, economic distress, environmental destruction, social injustice. These are not separate issues. They are interconnected parts of the same picture, a picture of corporate control of California. I have a different vision. I think we can imagine a new California, and I'm ready to lead a new movement to make that new California a reality. We need somebody who says, I care about every citizen and every resident, whether you're citizens or not, in the state of California. My name is Luis J. Rodriguez. I grew up here in Watts and went to 109th Street School. This was a poor, black and brown, working class community then, and it still is today. 40% of the families here live below the poverty line. And this is just one of thousands of forgotten neighborhoods across this state where some 8.7 million poor Californians are struggling to put food on the table and keep a roof over their heads. I'm running for governor because it doesn't have to be this way. Everybody deserves, every human being in America deserves a fulfilling life. And so many people don't have fulfilling life. Luis is talking about poverty, and that's, that's one of the major issues. We're not talking about generalities. We're talking about real people and how they get affected by the fact that there's lack of access. Many people are just struggling just to make ends meet. And um, so he addresses that, and I think that's very important. I think it's outrageous that anybody would say that things are good now. We got a good governor. The governor's taking care of our people when, in fact, there's been 2.7 million more poor people since Governor Brown has been governor. Why do we have any homeless in the state of California? That's the first big question. We have a lot of people who are being pushed out of their homes, for example, foreclosures, people who can't get jobs, people who cannot make a living. There's people living in RVs and cars in their own neighborhoods. I think that's what California can be, is a place that's equal opportunity for everyone. This is an end poverty campaign. Great question. How would I challenge and reform the prison system? Restorative justice means that they come back and help restore what they took away, help repair, help work with the community. But if you do wrong, then can you come back and help heal? Can you come back and help change that? Can you work with the community to repair what was taken? You understand? And I know that works. I've seen it work. I was just at the Silmar Juvenile Hall about a few months ago working with these kids. Close to 80% of the California prisoners that always fluctuates are black and brown. And about 100% are poor people. Even the whites that are in there are generally from the poor communities. I am not convinced this is a prison system that's about time. <coughs> The about and we're talking about rehabilitation programs. We're talking about arts and healing programs that are going to be um, helpful for them. There used to be 15 prisons in the state of California for 15,000 prisoners. Now there's 34 prisons for 160,000 prisoners. They are building more prisons and only one or two colleges have been built in that time. This is no accident that they're creating what I call the largest state-sponsored poor people housing, the prison system of California. So what I'm gonna do is overhaul the whole system. It doesn't work. We have the highest crime rates of any state. We have the worst recidivism rate. You know what that means? Get rid of the prison system as we know it and bring people back home with real skills, real knowledge, real treatment, real health. Because the state and because the governor has failed, cities like Los Angeles are rising up and saying we are going to protect our residents and Governor Brown, if you don't, we will. And we're going to lead at the local level if the state does it. I am endorsed by the Green Party. I believe in the Green Party's values. The Green Party is the only party that I could see that I can get the endorsement. And one of the reasons why is because I believe in a, in a clean and healthy and green environment for everybody. 400,000 pounds of toxic chemicals go into each well. Fracking, how many know what fracking is? So fracking is a way that they can get oil, extract oil. And one of the things about it is Governor Brown has created a situation where he will allow fracking in the state of California. And it all it does is destroy the land, destroy the soil. Of those chemicals, 32% cause cancer. For the sake of the future generations, these chemicals don't biodegrade. We cannot allow them to keep putting this in our ground. 
we don't have an environment that's clean and green for everybody. We're sick and tired of constant pollution for decades. Aquí estamos en frente de Exide diciendo de que queremos barrios saludables. Estamos cansados de tanta contaminación y estamos aquí diciendo de esto. Exide is a massive battery recycling facility. I worked here in 1978 when it was owned by National Lead. It's been a lead foundry and a, a lead plant since the 1920s. It's been poisoning this community ever since then. They've spent apparently eight to ten million dollars to make this safer, and it's still poisonous. What do you think should be done? I think, unfortunately, we have to close down this plant. But I would also say there's a lot of people that work here. They need to have their jobs. There's got to be a way that we can keep them working, maybe clean up the area, because if you know, for miles, it's all industry. All the industry is contributing. This might be the worst polluter, but they're all contributing. A third of all residents breathe poisonous air in the state of California. They're putting our families in danger, in particular our kids, our elders. So now it's a combination. How can we have safe jobs and safe communities? Nobody should come in the state of California if it's going to poison one ounce of air or one little bit of sand. You understand? If they're going to do business in the state of California, they cannot poison our state. So we're going to have a chance to show the way our community. We want to have a chance to show that we can do something positive with our lives. We got to give them our guidance, what we learned. I will do everything I can to make sure that everybody has the best education for free. Proper schools, they can train our kids, and kids can get the technical and advanced education they need. I am personally excited for Lease and his desire to transform our current educational system, and this will make a significant impact in the lives of all of our students. As a civics and government teacher, Spire is dedicated to providing the education that many of our students were unable to receive at the more traditional high school. Turn on the news, and the corporate news guy told me the teachers took all our money. <laughs> I worked in schools where we had photocopied books for students. We are here teaching our students to be active participants in the political process. We're talking about free health care. That is a basic human right access to the best doctors, the best technology, to be surviving but also to be thriving. It's about getting behind people, helping them develop to their fullest. But we have to match those resources with all the resources that we have as a society. We bring people back into the political process, into the economic solutions that we determine that people can survive and can live and we're not going to be dependent on businesses, on corporations, on capitalists who decide that profit is more important than the lives of people. Too often we accept too little and, and too little is not what this life should be about. Today I want to invite everyone listening to gather other people around them to make sure that we stand by bravery, by courage, by truth, and step up to this challenge of making this campaign different. I really want to support Luis. I mean, he's a fantastic, fantastic uh, candidate. But the reason why I'm really behind Luis is because this is about more than one person, and he understands that. I've known Luis Rodriguez for now for 45 years. I respect him. He's an intellectual. He is also a member of the community who's come up from the grassroots. I enthusiastically support him for governor. In fact, he's the only he's the only elected official that I have uh, endorsed in the last 10 years. He is a person of integrity and will represent the people, all of the people of California. History is not just what happened. History is what you make right now. We have to be organized. So I will do everything I can. I will use executive powers. I will work with the legislature. I will do everything I can within the law to make sure that we can make these changes. We need a change as much as we need a radical revolution in electoral politics. My name is Rosa Clemente, and I'm a hip-hop activist. In 2008, I ran on the Green Party vice presidential ticket with Cynthia McKinney, and we made up the first woman of color ticket in American presidential politics. Because the idea is, united we stand against the two-party duopoly. We are in support of you, we need you, and when you become governor, we need you to hit the ground running. You all are here to do some amazing thing. We want to support the arts. One of the things that I have to fight for 
is to make sure that we have music, dance, theater, painting, uh, festivals in every neighborhood. Every neighborhood should come alive. Every neighborhood should have poetry and song, you understand? We got to fight for that. What is love? Love is many different things. Now he's running for God. We need to support this man. He comes from our struggle. Our essential issues are the same. We survive, we have kids, we want the best for our families, we want the best for our communities. Let's unite, stay united. Luis Rodriguez, necesitamos que gane ya para California. Necesitamos que estás con nosotros representando a la gente. California is the eighth largest economy in the world and the wealthiest state in the union. How can we justify a poverty rate worse than that of Mississippi? We can't. And as governor, my priority will be the creation of beneficial, clean, safe community building jobs. I'll take the $9 billion a year wasted on the bloated failed prison system and use it to restore the cuts to vital social services. I'll take the $38 billion a year that is generated in our state's giant modern ports and put it back into schools, training, and reemployment of the jobless medical clinics, services for our senior citizens, children, and Californians with disabilities. I'll take the billions that are expected in the budget surplus and immediately and fully restore and increase CalWORKs, CalFresh, and other social welfare programs which millions of Californians depend on for survival. We've taken this campaign into the forgotten communities of California, to the food banks of East Oakland, to the unemployed streets of Fresno, from Venice to San Francisco, where wealthy developers are gentrifying senior citizens out of their homes, to the small towns where poverty is answered with police brutality. I've gone where everyday working class people are struggling to stay in school, to make ends meet, to survive. My campaign is about the 99%, and I think we can win. I don't care if you like hamburgers, tacos, or, you know, chitlins. I don't care. That's your freedom. You should like these things. Terrible, that should be your freedom. The essential thing, though, is we fight for our community. We fight for the best that we can have. So to me, that's what we have to do. Don't let anybody divide us by all these things. Let's stay united as a community, no matter what happens, that they know we cannot be broken up. Thank you all very much. Yes. This is great. This is great. Oh, my God!